You know, when someone says dinosaur, a picture of a giant scary monster mostly pops up in our brain. Even their name means terrible lizard in Greek. Yup, some of them definitely incited fear and trembling whenever they went. But not all dinos that used to walk, fly, or swim were gigantic. Plenty of them weighed less than 130 pounds. Some were the size of today's pigeons. Mouse, fox, deer, giraffe, elephant, whale… Modern animals come in different sizes. But out of around 700 known dinosaur species, there's a big gap between gigantic and those smaller ones. No middle-sized dinos documented or found. Big carnivores such as T-Rex ruled the Earth. Smaller dinosaurs could hide when they saw them coming, but middle ones wouldn't stand a chance. Even if they somehow managed to run away, the juveniles of these biggest predators would come after them. These dino teens acted like a species of their own. As they were growing up, they would get their predatory features. But they were still strong enough to catch middle-sized adults of some other dinosaur species. Teenage T-Rex, for instance, was much slenderer than its parents, but also got those fearsome teeth and powerful tail we'd be afraid of at a pretty early age. Yow! Herbivores grew so big because they were, well, quite greedy. These dinosaurs could eat enormous amounts of food in a very short time. Sometimes they would even swallow whole branches so quickly they didn't even have time to chew. Since they didn't have sharp teeth like carnivores, evolution had to give them something else for protection. Things like horns and spikes. But also, carnivores were smaller, which is another reason they had carried on for so long and managed to survive. The smallest dinosaur skeleton found was called mouse lizard. Go ahead, try to eat that one, T-Rex. You'd have to find it first. Scientists used to believe birds evolved from meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods. That's the group where T-Rex belongs to. But later, they found birds evolved from smaller species from that group. Whew, we really got lucky there. Dinosaurs mostly hatch from eggs, like birds. Even when they classify dinos, scientists don't divide them into plant or meat eaters. They say there are two groups, one that had lizard-like hips and the other with bird-like hips. The oldest fossilized bird dates back 150 million years. Those birds even kind of looked like smaller feathered dinosaurs. They had sharp teeth, but again, luckily, they lost them and later evolved beaks. Picture if they didn't. Today, toothy pigeons would be chasing us around. Okay, take it easy, buddy. Not so funny anymore. So, speaking of small feathery creatures, T-Rex was also one of them. Yeah, hard to picture it, but even the tyrant lizard king wasn't always that scary. In the early stages, T-Rex was just a fuzzy ball, big as an average-sized turkey. Juveniles were small and weak. Predators, sickness, lack of food, all these things would sometimes be too much to fight after getting out of the egg. So, small, fluffy T-balls only had 40% chance to survive to their first birthday. Bam! The asteroid hit the Earth. The big space rock was the size of Mount Everest, and it traveled at 45,000 miles per hour. After it entered the gravity in Earth's atmosphere, it turned into a fireball. Dinosaurs were spread all over seven continents, even Antarctica. True, Antarctica wasn't covered in snow those days. Poles had rich forests growing there. Not only dinosaurs went extinct at that point, but around 75% of all animals that lived on Earth. When the asteroid hit, it made a large crater where this huge heat wave and blast wave went out, throwing enormous amounts of matter into the atmosphere. The suit in the air didn't completely block out the sunlight, but it was seriously reduced anyway. Without light, plants didn't have conditions for normal growth. That way, fewer herbivores could survive, which meant less food for carnivores. The whole ecosystem started collapsing like dominoes. Dinosaurs have been gone for the past 65 million years, but their family trees have stretched back 165 million years, way more than the human ones. But not all dinosaur species lived at the same time. Fossils are the only way we ever got a chance to meet dinosaurs. Our age never actually mingled with the era of these magnificent beasts, since some form of humans were only here 6 million years ago. More modern humans that we can closely relate to walked the Earth roughly 200,000 years ago. Some species did see dinosaurs, though, like green sea turtles. These fellas have been here for so long, I guess they really have lots of cool stories to share. And not just them. Bees, starfish, lobsters, crocodiles, snakes, sharks, horseshoe crabs, cockroaches, and many others were also there to see the dinosaurs rise and fall. Dinos mostly had pretty small brains, like me. For example, Stegosaurus had the brain the size of a walnut and could grow up to 21 feet. Hmm, no jokes here, since good old Stegosaurus had some other impressive features, such as those huge upright plates on its back. 
Yep, those could reach up to 30 inches in length and are something we all recognize this dino for. Scientists are still not quite sure what these plates were for. Perhaps for regulating blood flow and, by that, controlling Stegosaurus's body temperature. The plate system might even control their skin color, which came in handy if they wanted to scare off predators or attract potential mates. Trudon had a bit more than a walnut in its head, a body more than 6 feet long, a brain the size of today's birds or mammals, great hunter, stereoscopic vision. It was also one of the first dinosaurs discovered in North America. T-Rex is the most famous dino and one of the first ones we think of when someone mentions big lizards. But it wasn't even on the list of the 15 biggest in the whole group. Argentinosaurus was the biggest dinosaur and the biggest land animal ever found. 100 feet long, 75 tons. Wow! This one really made the ground shake. So if dinosaurs were alive in our age and you were on the 6th floor casually watching TV and chilling, and suddenly seeing the head peeking in on you through your window, yup, that would be Argentinosaurus. That wouldn't be such a big problem since this giant was a plant-eater. So it would probably wait for you to throw out some fruits or vegetables from your fridge. Now, considering its size, you need to have around 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of plants. Phew, triffle, who doesn't have that in the fridge? Plesiosaurus was a marine reptile that lived in the dinosaur era and went extinct almost as they did. Hmm, I think I'd rather face T-Rex than this one. Dinosaurs ruled the land where you can at least take shelter, I guess. But Plesiosaurus ruled the waters, and you got nowhere to hide there. This giant would propel itself through the water with its enormously strong, paddle-like flippers. They'd move the animal up and down, sort of like bird's wings. So, if we'd give away some titles, this one, Sujausaurus, would be promoted to the weirdo of the dino group. It looked like a huge rat with a very furry body. Its look suggests it could be related to today's ground sloth. For a long time, scientists thought dinosaurs were cold-blooded, like lizards, snakes, and other reptiles. Later on, another research came in, and it turned out they were more of warm-blooded animals, something like mammals. In 2014, scientists finally settled that dinosaurs were mostly mesotherms. That means they were somewhere in between. Scientists observed fossils found in ancient rocks to find out when some animal lived and how it behaved. Most of the fossils found were from dinosaurs that lived near water. Water covers their remains with mud, keeping them buried deep below. Not many fossils have been found in mountains or deep in jungles. Even before dinosaurs, there were some pretty scary reptiles. Ruling lizards, archosaurs, mammal-like reptiles, therapsids, and pelicosaurs. Around 20 million years after dinosaurs appeared and evolved, one of the most dangerous reptiles was still out there, the prehistoric crocodile. A couple of million years more were supposed to go for dinosaurs to truly start their reign. No one ever discovered what kinds of sounds dinosaurs really made. In movies, people mix various sounds some of today's animals produce. For instance, T-Rex had a roar that was a combination of a tiger's snarl, the squealing of a baby elephant, and an alligator's croak. And its breathing was the sound of air going through the whale's blowhole. Same with their color. People mostly think dinosaurs were grayish-green because that's how they show them in movies, as some sort of big lizards. Their color still remains a mystery, but recent research has shown pigments some species had, with one in particular having white and orange rings on its tail. How cool! Ah, baby T-Rex was adorable. There, I said it. Hard to imagine those two words in the same sentence. But come on, even Big Bad T-Rex didn't pop out of its shell all big, scary, and fully grown. In its first few months on Earth, Baby T was a cute, fluffy, turkey-sized ball of fuzz. It was kind of like a weird-looking bird coming out of an oversized egg. Not enough food, dangerous surroundings, asteroids, hmm. Poor Baby T's were so helpless and weak, only about half of them made it to their first birthday party. Scientists think their fuzz was there to keep them warm when they were still small and vulnerable. Plus, it helped them camouflage and stay safe. Baby teeth didn't have big, sharp teeth, yet. So, they mostly munched on smaller reptiles and insects. Baby teeth grew up pretty fast. They put on up to 6 pounds a day. Hey, I've done that. No, not really, just felt like it. The weirdest fact about them? When they were little, their arms looked totally normal compared to their bodies. But by the time they were full-grown, their parents were super famous. Plastered all over t-shirts, um, that would be a T-Rex t-shirt, 
um, movies, and the greatest Halloween costume ever, in my humble opinion. But the T-Rex we know and love didn't really exist. First of all, speed. They weren't really that fast. In the movies, you could never get away from them, even if the path was clear and you were in a pretty decent car. Early predictions were that T-Rexes could run somewhere between 10 and 30 miles an hour, which is whoa! But recent research shows they could only reach around 12 miles per hour. Anything more than that would have shattered their massive bones. So relax. After a couple months of training, even the most dedicated couch potato could get away from the sharp teeth of this guy. And what about our good friend Stegosaurus? It lived around 150 million years ago, so it didn't even get the chance to meet those cute baby teeth. They appeared much later. We all recognize this dinosaur. It's the one with those ridiculous upright plates on its back. They were sometimes up to 3 feet tall. You could hide behind one. Scientists still don't really know why they had them, but they think Stegosaurus could have regulated blood flow through them, like a massive bony thermostat. They also believe these dinos could use the same system to control their skin color, depending on whether they wanted to look good or look scary. Sounds impressive, right? Well, at least something about them does, because this poor thing had a brain that weighed just a tiny bit more than a tennis ball and was around the size of a walnut. That's a dog's brain in a hippo's body. Troodon was one of the most brainy dinosaurs. A great all-around fella, excellent hunter, stereoscopic vision, 6 feet long, and a brain that just won't quit. What a catch! Troodon's remains were one of the first dinosaur discoveries in North America. One of the weirdest members of the dinos was definitely… well, let's just call her Sue. If you met her, you'd feel like you're looking at a big turkey rat thing with a super furry body. It might be the long-lost grandma of the modern ground sloth. Its buddy, Pegamostax, definitely wasn't far behind when it comes to racking up the weirdo points. It looked like something between a porcupine and parrot. But don't say that to its face, it had a couple of pointy teeth that could sharpen against one another. The largest and one of the heaviest known dinosaurs was Argentinosaurus. No one ever found a complete skeleton, but this beast must have weighed about 100 tons and was about 130 feet long. Compare it to the biggest animal we have now, the blue whale. It's only 100 feet long. When someone says dinosaur, you probably imagine some big-as-a-building beast that could use a tree as a toothpick. Some of them were gigantic, true, like those long neck long tail dinos. Those things were as long as an airplane. But many of them were small and lightweight, some of them the size of pigeons. The smallest dinosaur skeleton ever found was a tiny mouse lizard. Some dinosaurs had tails that were more than 45 feet long. That way, it was easier for them to keep their balance when running. But they didn't drag their tail along the ground. Dinosaurs kept pretty active and were quite fast, so they kept their tails in the air most of the time. Even though that naughty asteroid wiped most of them out, a lot of dino DNA stuck around and morphed into animals we know today, like birds. The first time anyone even thought of linking the two together was after they discovered a primitive bird in Germany, sehr gut. Later, researchers classified two groups of dinosaurs, depending on what kind of hips they had. The first group looked pretty familiar. They had lizard-like hips. The second group had bird-like hips. And a third group looked like Shakira, which is where her tune My Hips Don't Lie comes from. Actually, no. Also, plenty of old-school carnivores had bones filled with air, which is something birds have too. Birds may be the dinosaur's living descendants, but some animals actually witness the age of dinosaurs. If only they could talk. Snakes, bees, sharks, crabs, lobsters, yum, crocodiles, cockroaches, even green sea turtles. They all actually saw real dinosaurs. So jealous. Carnivore dinos mostly walked on two feet. That way they could be faster and have their hands free to grab a little snackosaurus. Plant eaters walked on four feet so they could carry their heavy bodies. Some of the bigger plant eaters needed around a ton of food per day, literally. Imagine animals so big, they had to eat a house-sized pile of veggies on a daily basis. 
Still, a huge bush a day keeps the doctor away. Is that where that started? There are around 700 known species of extinct dinosaurs. Sounds like a lot, but we probably haven't discovered them all. Five years back, they found out about a new type of dinosaur. It had these stubby horns right above its eyes, which looked so much like the comic book character. They named it Hellboy. Hop on the bright side of life together with our brand new tees, hoodies, and more. Click the link to pick your choice. In the 90s, scientists discovered a crater in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. You know the story. Around 66 million years ago, a meteor the size of Mount Everest hit our planet and filled the atmosphere with dust, gas, and debris that caused a serious climate catastrophe. It triggered a heat wave and a blast wave that went up into the atmosphere, partially blocking out the sun. Game over. Thanks for playing, dinosaurs! The age of humans never crossed over with the dinosaur era. Dinosaurs disappeared more than 60 million years ago, but they existed on Earth for 160 million years. Modern-looking humans have only been around for about 250,000 years. Only 59 million years to go, people! Not all the dinosaurs were on vacation in Mexico when the asteroid hit. They lived all over the globe. Some lived in deserts, while others lived in areas near ancient rivers surrounded by thick forests and rich vegetation. And they weren't too picky, so they lived wherever, even Antarctica. But it wasn't covered in snow back then. Both poles had forests growing on them. Most people imagine all dinosaurs to be grayish-green because of the movies. Plus, we usually just think of them as giant lizards. Scientists still don't know much about dinosaur skin tones, but researchers recently found some evidence that dinosaurs totally embrace the rainbow. One little guy had white and orange rings on his tail. Dinosaur is Greek for terrible lizard. Scientists used to think dinosaurs were mostly cold-blooded like snakes, lizards, or other reptiles. Turns out they were wrong, maybe. Some evidence pointed to them being warm-blooded like mammals. Somewhere in 2014, scientists discovered that most dinosaurs were mesotherms. A little of this, a little of that. And it turned out many of them had feathers, just like little baby tea. It helped them regulate their body temperature. Another thing we got from the movies and totally thought was real? What dinosaurs sound like? Producers usually mix together a bunch of animal noises to get that authentic dino roar. T-Rex is usually a mix of alligator, tiger, and the squealing of a baby elephant. And that dreaded T-Rex breath? It was just the sound of air going through a whale's blowhole. Now, thanks to new fossil discoveries and technologies, we're getting to learn more and more about the biology of dinosaurs. Some people don't need to know more than the fact that a few of them were colossal, terrifying, and vicious. But for those of us that do, the use of comparative biology, pigment analysis, and powerful new x-rays have allowed us to gain insight into specific features, such as their colors, eating behaviors, and the shapes of their tongues. Yes, that's right, the shapes of their tongues, which, for a long period of time, was something of a mystery. This is because soft, fleshy dinosaur parts are hardly ever retained in fossil form. But thanks to the discovery of some surviving hyoid bones, which are situated at the root of the tongue in front of the neck, we now have some insight. Most animals have this hyoid bone that anchors the tongue. The shape and complexity of the bone determine how free-moving the tongue can be. Scientists have discovered that nearly all dinosaurs had simple tongues that laid flat and were extremely similar to the tongues found inside the mouth of a crocodile today. Yeah, this crocodile. Go ahead and take a closer look. Nah, just kidding. Come on back. Let's take a look at some specific dinosaurs and start with a Brachiosaurus. Let me stick my neck out on the line by guessing that most of you will be familiar with this dinosaur because of its neck. You know, the one which was typically 30 feet in length? Despite its neck being its most distinctive feature, its name actually translates to arm lizard in Greek. It's common knowledge that the Brachiosaurus was one of the largest dinosaurs to ever have lived. On average, it reached 76 feet in length and 40 feet in height, as roughly the length of two school buses and as high as a four-story building. 
none of which were around in the era of the big guy here. Fragmentary leg bones and vertebra of even larger dinosaur species are known, but these skeletal remains are too incomplete to determine their exact size. So this guy may have been the largest dinosaur ever. A renowned herbivore, thank goodness. The Brachiosaurus is thought to have eaten up to 880 pounds of dry plant matter every day. Most of this was made up of coniferous trees, ginkgos, and cycads. This target might have been hard to hit for this dinosaur, as researchers have learned that its teeth were spoon-shaped and not ideal for chewing food. This means that the creature would have swallowed vegetation whole, as its teeth were suited to stripping it but not breaking up large chunks of plants. This, along with the dinosaur's body shape, suggests that the Brachiosaurus would have liked to feed as quickly as possible. Dinos like these didn't always make use of their ability to strip towering trees when dining. The Brachiosaurus traveled in herds, moving to the next location once they had exhausted all of the local vegetation. And I mean all of the local vegetation, not just that which hung high on trees. It's likely that the creatures supplemented their diets with vegetation at lower levels, especially after they'd done a number on all the nearby trees. This method of feasting was the most energetically appealing for this giant. By munching on lower vegetation, researchers believe that the dinosaurs saved up to 80% in energy compared to when foraging for high-up food sources. They have also discovered that the nostrils of a Brachiosaurus were on the front of its face and not the top. This is because we now know they roam the fertile floodplains in their respective herds. For decades, it was believed that these creatures lived in deep, watery swamps. Let's look at another common misconception about a popular dinosaur. Please put your hands together for the Tyrannosaurus rex, which is arguably the most famous of all dinosaurs. Discoveries from the past 100 years have revealed that theropods had heavily feathered skin. Theropods are the family of dinosaurs to which the T. rex belongs, so naturally, people began to think that the creature would have been covered in feathers as well. However, a study from 2017 took skin impressions from the iconic dinosaur and found no evidence of the structures required to support feathers. If a T. rex did have feathers, they would have been limited to its back. Researchers accept that other large dinosaurs of the same family as the T. rex have been discovered with their remains covered in feathers. An example of this would be the Euteranus dinosaur. But as of now, the accepted theory is that feathers weren't a common feature of T. rexes. This makes it easier to believe that feathers were exclusive to smaller tyrannosaurids and were there as a means of keeping the creature warm. For a long period of time, researchers thought feathers were an exclusive feature of the theropod family. But this theory has been debunked. Just like the kid at camp who was kicked out of the top bunk. You know, debunked. Anyway, fossil evidence discovered in Siberia now suggests that multiple different family groups of dinosaurs had feathers. The Siberian fossils in question belong to another species of dinosaur, Calendodromius zabicolicus. Oh, you think I mispronounced that? Okay, prove it. Now, this dinosaur, I'll call her Kalinda, had a pelvis structure superficially similar to that of a bird and was roughly 4.5 feet long, about as tall as a fridge. Since the purpose of feathers on dinosaurs was for warmth, it's quite possible that dinosaurs from cold-weather climates had more feathers than their counterparts in warm-weather climates. In general, Bigger animals struggle less with keeping themselves cool, so it's likely that any of the large dinosaurs who lived in these warm climates had no feathers at all. Smaller dinosaurs who lived in cold climates, on the contrary, had plenty of feathers. We now even understand what some of the designs and patterns of these feathers on dinosaurs looked like, thanks to the discovery of an ornithomimus, complete with feather and skin impressions. The name of this dinosaur is derived from Greek and actually translates to bird mimic. They were typically 11.5 feet in length, nearly as tall as a giraffe, and despite being omnivorous, had no teeth. Its other distinctive features include three fingers, 
which were all unusually the same size and length. And despite their thin bone skulls, they also had large brain cavities. Their legs were extremely long, in particular their foot bones. Combine this with their toothless beaks and long necks, and yep, it must have looked a lot like an ostrich. Although they're not as big as the brachiosaurus or dinosaurs in general, they are bigger than any other bird in the world. And it wasn't just the body limbs of an ornithomimus that made it resemble an ostrich. They also had very similar feather patterns. Their heads, necks, and lower legs were mostly bare of feathers, but the rest of their bodies were well coated in downy plumage. This is what you call a bird's layer of feathers as a whole. It's possible, like an ostrich, that the dinosaur would have used this unusual feather pattern to regulate its body temperature. Despite some dinosaurs possessing feathers like birds, on top of also being their distant relatives, dinosaurs didn't have the type of feathers required to fly for most of their existence. Feathers found in fossil impressions or preserved in amber have allowed researchers to gain insight into why these creatures weren't very aerodynamic. The structure of these feathers appears to be very simple, with a poorly defined and flexible central shaft. These feathers would have better served any dinosaur as a fashion statement, as they would have helped attract the attention of other dinosaurs. These feathers also would have had the ability to regulate body temperature. Surprised to hear that dinosaurs had ostrich-like feathers? <laughs> Wait till I tell you that their prehistoric distant reptile cousins had something that looked like fur. Allow me to introduce you to the pterosaur. Its name is derived from Greek and translates to wing lizard. Just like dinosaurs, they were initially thought to have scaly or leathery skin all over their bodies. But over the course of the 20th century, fossil examinations revealed that many parts of a pterosaur's body were furry. The wingspan of a pterosaur could reach the length of over 23 feet, about as long as a London bus. Its toothless jaw was very long and resembled that of a pelican. How could something that looks like a pelican be so terrifying? These creatures were coated in pycnofibers. Those were simple structures, feather-like in composition, but strand-like and fuzzy like fur. Further research suggests that some parts of the pterosaur's body had more complex kinds of feathers with branching strands. If this is accurate, it would be the first time feathers were found on an animal that was neither a dinosaur nor a bird. The largest land animal ever known was Argentinosaurus. One bone of this giant was as large as a grown-up human. The complete skeleton hasn't been discovered yet. Still, the scientists claim this dinosaur could be around 121 to 131 feet. If seven Argentinosauruses stood in a row, they could replace the London Bridge. Pterosaurs were usually large. The smallest species had a 10-inch wingspan, while the largest ones could have it up to 36 feet wide. For comparison, the largest span of a modern bird's wings is just about 11 feet. They were the size of a modern giraffe, but they weighed less to be able to fly, only 550 pounds. Brachiosaurus was 86 feet long, and it had an incredibly long neck, standing over 40 feet in the air. Its whole body was designed for this animal to get food from trees easily. Its hind legs were relatively short, and the front ones somewhat longer. Diplodocus had curious teeth shaped like a comb. The dino was 85 feet long and weighed slightly more than three elephants. Its neck was so long that scientists aren't sure how the animal could even hold it. Parala Titan was about 82 to 100 feet long. Its bones were so large that Parala Titan could even rival Argentinosaurus in size. If they invaded London, four of these creatures standing on each other's shoulders would be enough to fix Big Ben's hands if they were a little too fast. Austroposeidon, what a beautiful name, huh? Is the largest among all the Titanosaur species. A fully grown animal was about 80 feet long, which is around one and a half of a Hollywood sign. Spinosaurus lived where the Sahara Desert is now. There used to be rivers full of fish and lots of swamps, so it lived both in and out of the water. 
It was almost 50 feet long and had a large plate on its back that looked more like a sail and spines on its sides. Tylosaurus was one of the biggest creatures that ever lived on our planet. It grew to 45 feet long, ate fish and even larger creatures like sharks, except for the Meg, which was about the same length. Tylos had a really weird extra set of teeth on the roof of its mouth for a better grip and grind. Despite its large size, T-Rex was really fast and had a large brain. This terrifying 40-foot-long dino was related to a chicken. It came from a bird family and might have had feathers, so it's technically a very angry bird with very sharp teeth. Their tiny arms with two fingers were the size of human arms. Suchomimus looked like a retro version of a crocodile. By the way, its name actually means crocodile mimic. They were about 34 to 36 feet long, almost twice as long as today's longest saltwater croc named Lolong. It measured slightly above 20 feet. Parasaurolophus had incredible jaws that would grind and not chew plants. It had a weird head ornament. The scientists still aren't sure about its purpose, but one of the most popular theories claims it was much needed for regulating temperature. These giants were 12 feet tall and over 30 feet long. Allosaurus had 8-inch long claws, 70 massive razor-sharp teeth, and a flexible skull. Thanks to its bone structure and jaws that could bend outwards, these dinos could grab and hold even the largest chunks of meat. They were only 9 feet tall, slightly taller than the world's tallest man, but very long, having 32-foot bodies. Stegosaurus was famous for the plates that adorned its spine. They were used as thermal control, soaking up sunlight during the day and distributing it all over its body at night. They had a pretty small brain compared to their body mass. These dinos were about 30 feet long and 13 feet tall. A triceratops weighed 8 tons despite a plant-based diet. They were quite slow walking because of that multi-ton weight. To chew those leaves better and faster, it was geared with about 800 teeth. This many teeth would never fit in a human's mouth. It's as if one human had teeth of 25 adult individuals. Compared to his dino mates, Majungasaurus was relatively short, around 6 feet, yet quite long, about 25 feet. Its enormous tail would make up over 50% of its body length. If these guys lived in London, there'd be no way they could take a double-decker, being just the same length as this famous London bus. Plateosaurus, which literally means a flat lizard, was about 23 feet long. It weighed like four cows and had large claws for thumbs that it could use to collect food. Scientists aren't sure if it walked on two or four feet. Gallimimus was about 20 feet long thanks to its large tail. It was also pretty tall, about nine feet. A human being could stand without bending under that tail if it was raining. It wasn't that broad, but enough to keep one human dry. Dilophosaurus was quite into eating fish. Its teeth weren't powerful enough, and the front ones even had a gap between them. So real hunting was sort of a challenge for it. These dinos were about 19 feet long, just about the size of a giraffe stretched on a grassy lawn, and 6 feet tall. Pachycephalosaurus, let's call it simply Paco, may not have been the largest of its kind, but it had spectacular 3D eyes. If you invited it to the movies, it would probably need no glasses on. It would be hard to find a comfortable seat for your new buddy, though. It was about 16 feet long and 5 feet tall. Dracorex means the king of dragons, probably because of the numerous knobs on its head that looked like a crown. It had tiny front arms, so even if it had a crown on, it wouldn't have been able to take it off. They were about 15 feet long, had awesome sharp teeth and incredibly hard skulls that were a perfect soft cushion for their tiny brains. Trudon was shorter than an adult human, only 4 feet tall, but it was wider, measuring about 6 feet. Scientists believe it was the smartest dino of all. Compared to modern land animals, a Trudon was as smart as an ostrich, and these guys are brainy. It also had a lot of teeth, 
letting them eat different types of food. There was one dino as large as a human being. An average human is about 5 foot 6 inches tall and 1 foot 6 inches wide. This guy was slightly larger than a human lying on a couch. 1 foot 6 inches tall and 6 foot 5 inches wide thanks to its lovely tail. It's a velociraptor, a bird-like dinosaur. Even though these birds had wings and feathers, they were unable to fly. Another dino that could blend in human groups, if they coexisted, was Borogobia. It was neither tall nor wide, both measurements under 5 feet. It could be a nice prehistoric pet. Microraptor wasn't that good at flying, despite having long feathers and long upper arm bones. It could probably glide from tree to tree, looking for some food, or even launch itself into the air and fly short distances. It weighed under one pound and was about two and a half feet long. Juravenator was only two and a half feet long, shorter than a Maine Coon. Many theropods were bird-like, but this dino most likely had scales instead of feathers. Anchiornis was another giant chicken, just like T-Rex. This guy had colorful feathers and was impressively good at flying short distances. Still, long distances were quite challenging for it. They were tiny, only about 13 inches long, and weighed no more than 4 ounces. The smallest dino that had ever lived on our planet was Oculodentibus. It was even smaller than today's world's smallest bird, the bee hummingbird. But while the latter prefer eating some freshly picked nectar, Oculodentibus had razor-sharp teeth and preferred insects to sweet flowers. It's kind of unfair to talk about prehistoric animals and not include Mr. Mammoth. They weren't that large, just about the size of a modern African elephant. The main difference between mammoths and elephants is the ear size. Because of cold climate, mammoths had small ears and kept them close to their heads. Their tusks were 15 feet long, about the length of a dragorex.